Zechariah 1 7. Upon the four and twentieth day, 24, of the eleventh month, which is the month Seba, the second year of Dyrus. So these are all dated by Dyrus. We began uh, with Haggai. And it was the, the sixth month. Came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Idol, the prophet, saying, I saw by night, this is night vision, we are in the realm of Daniel in vision and dream. Alongside of the book of Revelation. Now we are not in the book of Revelation. I saw a post today. Uh, something with the current event. And is this the, the, the second or third horse? Friend, we're not in the tribulation period yet. If you are afraid of the events current you better believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to get out of here before the real tribulation period comes. now last week I was I visited my son and I told him I said it would be a thing that Satan would have Christians today believe with the, the famines and the drought and the lack of water all over the world he would have the Christians to be deceived to think we are in the tribulation period Elijah has called for no rain. And I'm right. Because that's what they're saying. They're comparing it to the tribulation period, the signs, the seals. The... We're not there yet. You know what you need next? Well, the Lord's not going to come. We are going to go into tribulation. We missed the tribulation. I mean, the, ma the rapture. Now I'm trying to get to is when we're looking at these red horses in Zechariah, this is not the tribulation period. This is not the red horse, the four horses of the apocalypse. I saw by night, and behold, a man, now watch the wording, riding upon a red horse. One man, one red horse. And he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom. He's riding the red horse, but he stood by the middle of the myrtle tree. And behind him were there red horses, don't know how many, plural, speckled in white. Zacharias sees this. One man riding a red horse evidently gets off the red horse. He's standing by myrtle trees in the bottom. I would assume in the metal. And behind him are red horses, plural. Speckled, that means they got specks. And white. Red and white horses. Then said I, and this is, this is the beginning, I, I think there are seven of these visions. And if you were to say you know them all, you are a liar. And I said, oh my Lord, small l, what are these? A man on a red horse and a bunch of red horses, white and speckled. So there is something that Zechariah looks at this vision. And we call to the fact is this is not just a vision. This is symbolic. This is a type. Like Nebuchadnezzar in his dream. Oh my eyes. 
and the angel that talked with me. Okay, now, Zachariah has an angel. Said unto me, I will show thee what these be. The man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, so that man that was on the horse, standing, he's going to speak. There's that man, there's Zechariah, there's an angel. These are they whom the Lord has sent to walk through and throw through the earth. So these are nowhere ordinary horses and men. If God were to open up our eyeballs of the scale, the world would freak out. If we were to see what is going on, what we don't see. And there are times in the Bible that as Paul describes it, the scale fell off from his eyes. But the scales of Paul were he was blind. They answered the angel of the Lord. There's Jesus. That stood among the myrtle trees. Wait a minute. The angel of the Lord stood among the myrtle trees. Verse 8, I saw by night, behold, a man riding upon a red horse, and he stood by the myrtle trees that were in the bottom. By him were there were red horses speckled in white. Then I said, O Lord, where are these? And the angels talked with me, said unto me, I will show thee what these be. The man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, these are whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro to the earth. Then answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees. He said, That stood among the myrtle trees that we have walked to and fro to the earth. That man that's on the red horse, not the white horse, is going up and down the earth is the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord in the Old Testament is the Lord Jesus Christ. We I saw by night a man riding upon a red horse. Amen. He stood among the myrtle trees. If there is a man and there is a man standing by the myrtle tree, that would be we. If it's not the one and only. And that in the bottom, behold him, I mean, excuse me, behind him, he that stood. <laughs> There are red horses speckled away. There's no mention of horse men. There are horses. Then said I, O Lord, what are these? The angel that talked with me. Zechariah has an angel. And will show thee what these be. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, Mr. Angel, you want to show me what's going on to totally this picture? The man that stood among the myrtle trees that was a man, verse 8, answered and said, These are they, that, these are they, horses? Whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro from the earth. And then answered the angel of the Lord. Okay, another character. The angel of the Lord Jesus shows up. That stood among the myrtle trees. 
the he in verse 8. The man in verse 10. The man riding the horse in verse 8. Because there could be a man riding a horse gets off his horse and run and, and stood against the myrtle trees and have horses behind him. Or there could be a man riding a red horse with a man standing by the myrtle trees where there's red horses behind him. Zechariah is standing there and he has an angel speaking with him. The angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees says, We... <laughs> have walked to and through the earth. So which tells us Jesus Christ was not bound to be at the throne of God always. He shows up many times. He first shows up to Hagar. The fact is that when Jesus Christ was born in the manger, Lived 33 and a half years. That's not the only time he's been on earth. And that's the only time he has taken on human flesh. We have walked to and fro from the earth. Well, come over here to Job. If my computer will let me. Job chapter 1. Let's be getting something. To, you, you don't, the computer does not want me to do this. Job 1. Look at Job 1 7. And the Lord, Jehovah, God, said to Satan, Lucifer, the devil, the serpent, the dragon, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered, Lord, said, from going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down it. Oh, okay, that's, that's just a freak thing. Chapter 2, verse 2. And the Lord said to Satan, what is coming down? And Satan answered, the Lord said, from going to and fro from the earth and walking up and down it. Even weird, uh, I like, I think it's Luke 4. All right, Luke chapter 4. I don't go running to Matthew like anybody else does. All right, Luke chapter 4. Look at verse 5. And the devil take his hand, Jesus, up to a high mountain. Okay. Oh, verse 9. And he, the devil, brought him, Jesus, to Jerusalem to set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Back to Zechariah. So we come back to Zechariah, verse 10. Uh, we'll get what Jesus said. Verse 11. We walk to and fro over the earth, and behold, the earth is still in the You know, there's a lot of... there's. Jesus Christ, there is whoever this horseman is, maybe these horses, there is Satan who is the devil, they're all walking up and down this planet Earth right now. And the world disguises it as the Estar Bunny, Satan Claus, Oh, why is there two creatures that go all around the world in one afternoon or one night? You get what I'm saying? And they're on Estar and Tamu's day. I would say the two fairies, but the two fairies are not out every night. That's scripture with scripture. Now you, you're going to run to 
And I, where is it? Okay. Revelation. The five. I know it's in there. Six? Six. I, uh, six. Six, two, white horse. Six, four. Uh, red horse. Six, three, uh, six, five, black horse. There's a pale horse somewhere. Eight. All right, before we go run into, we're in the book of Revelation in Zechariah, there's a white horse, then a red horse. That white horse is not Jesus Christ. That's the devil. Because look what follows this horse. Death, hell, famine, war. That don't follow Jesus in 19. You got a white horse, then a red horse. Back to Zechariah. We got to run into all kinds of scripture here. Because we just don't want to just say anything and be a Baptist. Hate to do that. So, go back to the beginning. Upon the 4 and 20th day of the 11th month in the month of Sebat, which has to be very important. I don't know. I don't have the answer. But this is the only month so far that's been named. Second year, Darius came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, the prophet, saying, I saw by night and behold a man riding upon a red horse. Did you just read what we read or are you just jumping to conclusions? Upon the four and twentieth day of the eleventh month, which is the month Sebat, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah. Here comes the word of the Lord. I saw by night, behold, a man riding upon. The word of Jehovah. And he says, I see a red horse. He stood among the murder. Wait, wait, he says, I see, behold, a man, a horseman riding a red horse. Boom. Where's the white horse? And he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom. And behind them there were red horses, speckled and white. Well, that's in Revelation, the white horses come first. The speckled horses come third or fourth. Got the colors, but not the right order. Then said, oh my Lord, what are these? <laughs> I'd be saying the same thing. The angel that talked with me said, I will show thee what these be. All right, I'm going to give you something. Here you go. You ready? The man, the man, not a man, the man. You remember the Passover lamb, Exodus 12? You shall get a lamb. You shall take the lamb. You shall take your lamb. You know what the world today in America doesn't want you to do? They don't want you to have pronouns. You can't say he, she, it. Well, you can say it. You can't say he or she. You cannot have the difficult article of a male or female because they're too stupid and by the way when you say stupid now on facebook that they, they, they get you facebook has gotten me three times now for hate speech in order for space facebook which i'm doing a video on facebook i'm going to say stupid 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 facebook 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 okay i got that on my system a man riding a red horse he stood among the myrtle trees. Behind him were red horses back on the way. The man stood among the myrtle trees. Is he or isn't he that rider on the red horse? I don't know. 
These? Who are the these? He says, verse 9, I will show you who these be. All right, these would be the man, the red horse, maybe the horseman, <laughs> the red horses, the speckle and white. It's everybody, including the horses and the man or men. All right. These are they whom the Lord sent to walk to and fro of the earth. I read to you where Satan walks. The book of Revelation, angels are all over the place, not horses. That's a big difference. There's a horse, and what I said was that Revelation 6? There's four horses in Revelation 6, I think it was. There's a horse in Revelation 19. There are the horsemen of the devil of the apocalypse. The Antichrist comes with peace. And there's war, there's famine, there's death and hell. With Jesus Christ, there are many and many after him. That's the church. got to rightly divide. It can't be Christians. These are they whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro the earth. And they answered, and they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees. Okay, you got Zechariah. He's standing there. He's got a man that's riding a red horse. You got a man standing by a myrtle tree. You got red horses. You got speckled and white horses. There's an angel with Zechariah. Zechariah is after Zechariah Zach asked the angel, "What is it?" The angel says, "I will answer you about thee." And he says, the man that stood, the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, got it? The man. These are they whom the Lord sent to walk to and fro throughout the earth. All right. Could be the horses and man or men. They answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees. Who is this? Who is the they? And if it's Jesus and it is standing by the myrtle trees, is that Jesus that was on the red horse? Or is the guy in the red horse totally different from the man, which is Jesus, by the myrtle tree? How's that one? Now, I'll tell you what you do. You get yourself a pencil and you open your King James Bible because no other Bible is going to help you. Maybe Geneva. And you go over by Zechariah 1. And if you want about 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Put yourself a little pencil question marks. And maybe the Lord will get to me when I read this again next year or later on. Okay? If you don't know something in the Bible, take yourself a pencil and put a question mark. We have walked to and fro from the earth, like Satan does. That's kind of creepy. You know, people get the DT, say they see lizards and reptiles and snakes wrap around poles. When they drink, what they used to when I was when I was a kid growing up was if you wanted to get intoxicating liquor, you had to go to the spirit shop. And I guess if you get too much of the listen, proper as it sits upright in the glass, don't even look at it. You are in the realm of Satan. You say, well, that don't help me. You know? I'm sorry. 
And the angel of the Lord answered and said, The angel of the Lord Jesus, Jehovah, O Lord of hosts, <laughs> speaking to God. Do you know how often Jesus in his earthly ministry spoke to God as the Father? There's Jesus Christ before he's born doing the same thing he'd done in his earthly ministry. How long will thou not have mercy in Jerusalem and the cities of Judah? Jerusalem and Judah had just been attacked. They had been put into captivity. It's torn to pieces. Babylon and Chaldeans destroyed them. Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel, Ezra, Nehemiah will tell us. And the Lord Jesus Christ, who wept over Jerusalem, said, Father, Enough is enough. Think about that for a moment. Isn't enough? Now what has happened with Haggai and Zechariah? Let's go back to what we've been reading and studying. They're in Judah. They're in Jerusalem. They built their houses, but they're not built the temple. That was Haggai. Zechariah is sent to come on. Let's get going. Let's do our work. Let's let's praise the Lord. In chapter one, we see whatever these beings are. They're walking the earth. They're, they're reporting back to God. It ain't finished yet. You say, well, how does that happen? When they built the Tower of Babel, didn't God say to himself, the Holy Trinity, let us go down there and take a look at this? You know, such a great marvel was the Tower of Babel in, in the book of, of Genesis that, come on, let's go check this out. You know, our telescope here don't work. And God came down and he said, well, we're if these people keep on, they're going to be a holy terror. We got to confront their language. It's in the fact that there's a report brought to God. And God says, He calls two of His angels, come, come on down with me. Where are we going, Father? Where are we going? God, well, we're going to have some, we're going to have dinner on the grounds first, and then I got a job for you. Now listen to me. Okay, come on with me. And they run into Abraham, and they're sitting there. And Abraham gets a meal, gets the the calf, and 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 uh, Sarah makes the bread, the cakes, and they're sitting there. And then God looks at the two angels and says, All right, I got a job for you. Yes, Lord. And then they take off, and next chapter, they're entering into Sodom. And they run into Lot. And they go into Lot's house, and the Sodomites come, and they want to tear the house down because they want to have sex with these men with no wings. And then the angels proclaim to Lot, hey, God sent us here because he's going to destroy this place. We're going to destroy this place. And it's not going to happen until we get you out. God heard the wickedness of Sodom, and he went down and he sent two angels into the wickedness. God heard about a tower of Babel, and he said, we're going to go down and we're going to check it out. God has Satan, the accuser of the brethren, running all around, and his devils. Because Satan can't be everywhere at the same time like God can be. And God has his beings, 
angels all over the place. Where have I entertained angels unaware? And it seems with scripture, with scripture, the fact is if God gets a, gets a report that the cup is getting near full, and God says, hey, go down and check that out for me. Here's, I may be overstretching, and, and forgive me if I have, but here are these beings, they're in Jerusalem, and the Lord Jesus Christ speaks, but God, uh, mercy. They haven't built the temple, or they're, they're doing it half-hearted now. Maybe God's like, I'm going to destroy that place. And Jesus Christ is interceding as he does, as a prophet like unto Moses. Yo, God, hold on here. If you wipe them totally out, the nations are going to speak against you. You know, Israel's going to learn one thing. There have been many times that God's like, I'm doing Somebody stepped up to the plate and said, God, it's the Lord Jesus Christ now. And the very fact is, when you get the story of Judah standing up to his brother, Joseph, who he doesn't know is his brother, for Benjamin, and, and Judah steps into place and says, let me stay, send my brother home. That Paul tells Anastasis for Philemon, hey, put it on my account. That's throughout the scriptures. I hope I'm not doing injustice. But he says, how long will thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and the cities of Judah? They're back in the land <laughs> against which thou has had indignation. How has God had it? Babylon came in and tore them up. These seven or 70 years, three score and ten years. That's how long they were in. So this is after the fact, and the, the Jesus is saying, Lord, <laughs> mercy? Didn't he give them mercy by going back? We left off with Haggai. They're not building. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. God has emptied their pockets. God is not giving them the full. They're not drinking to the full. They're not bringing in the harvest to the full. Bring that all to what the angel of the Lord says now. The next step would have been bring in the armies and de destroy it again. Then, we can three score and seventy, I want to say seven, three score and ten years. And the Lord answered the angel that talked with me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look at verse 12. We've got to do this slowly. The angel Lord answered and said, O Lord. Okay, who's speaking to God? Jehovah. Jesus. And the Lord Jehovah answered the angel that talked with me. Go back up. And he says in verse 9, he said, O my Lord, what are these small L? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, Verse 11, they answered the angel of the Lord, which is by the myrtle tree. you got two angels. The angel of the Lord speaks to the Father. Verse 13, the angel that, and the angel, yeah, and the Lord answered the angel that talked with me. With good words and comfortable words. I would take a safe assumption, and I'm assuming that the angel of which the scripture is either one of two angels for Israel and Zechariah. It's either Michael or it's Gabriel. Now, Gabriel's not an archangel. Get that. 
It could be just Gabriel. It could be Michael, there's God the Father, there's God the Son, precarnate, and there's either Michael or Gabriel. For the nation of Israel. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and Zion with a great jealousy. Now I'm always reminded. Now I had a preacher one time get up and say, Jealousy is a sin. No one ought to have jealousy for a sin. Now well, here it says God sin. According to his message. God said, I am Lord. Yes, Moses. Well, they ask you who your name is. What's your name? I am that I am. I am the good shepherd. I am the water of life. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection. I am jealous. In the law, there was a prescribing event if a man became jealous of his wife. And he would go to the priest and there was a, if I could say, ritual to prove his jealousy or to set things straight. What's going on? Everybody's loving themselves now. And they have forsaken the Lord and not doing for the Lord. And has been the topic is they're about the temple. In this day and age in church age, everybody's excited about building a building, building a church building, building a building of a building of a great church building, but they're not interested in going out with the commission of preaching the gospel. You see what the what the devil does, whatever dispensation you are. He gets you off track. Like I said, people are going to start saying, we are in the tribulation. We're not. And if you've got fear of the tribulation and what's going on in the current events, you better believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because it will get far worse. So God is looking at his people like, you're showing your love to somebody else. I don't like that. I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. Alright, this is the people who are not Jews. They're giving the Jews a hard time. Nehemiah and Ezra, uh, Sanballat. And the others trying to provoke the work to end, to stop. And probably the lack of effort and the lack of doing by the Jews, that, that God can't do nothing. For I was but a little displeased, and they, the Gentiles, helped forward the affliction. The Gentiles, their reaction is making me mad. That's what he's saying. You know what Paul said about the Jews in the book of Acts? You are causing the Gentiles to blaspheme God by your reaction. Totally opposite. You know what the church is doing today? The church is making Jesus... Look like a lunatic. With all the, you know, you, you think you're doing something for the Lord with all the world, and the, and the world's looking at it like, you're messed up. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Jehovah, 
I am returned to Jerusalem with mercy. Answering his son. My house shall be built in it. See the shall? It hasn't been built. Bring you back to Haggai. Haggai and Zechariah are running parallel. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now, you see the church? They're building church, building church, building church, building church, building church plan, church plan, church plan, church building, church. God says, you think you're rich, you think you're <laughs> you're poor, miserable, naked, and you make me sick. Saith the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. And that's going to be, you cross that line, you're in trouble. I think Zachariah is going to talk about soon the, the plummet line, if we haven't talked about that already. God's going to draw a line in the sand. Does that remind you of something with Jesus? Jesus knelt down and wrote something in the ground. <laughs> and then got up. He was he without sin. Let him cast the first stone. And everybody took off. <laughs> we don't know what Jesus wrote. What did we wrote Zechariah? You ain't done everything you're supposed to be doing. Cry yet, saying, Thus save the Lord of hosts. My city through prosperity. <laughs> That's the magic word in today's church. Shall yet be spread aboard. And the Lord shall yet be comforted in Zion. Second Advent Millennia name of Jerusalem. And shall yet choose, there's Jerusalem. There's a difference between Zion and Jerusalem. Now we'll pick up the other ones, visions, and try at it. What little we can do.